Assalamu alaikum, good evening. Welcome to Hajj Day Today, a program dedicated to bringing news and information and in-depth discussions about Hajj. Uh, today on the Islamic calendar is the fourth day of Dhul Hijjah, the year 1435. On the Christian calendar, today is the 28th of September 2014. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoy and benefit from all the news information and discussions that we have tonight. We're going to continue to look at the preparations being made in Saudi Arabia by the government. Uh, also, we're going to look at the movement within Saudi Arabia. Um, ha uh, Hajjahs uh, are starting to move from Medina to Mecca. And also, we're still seeing uh, Muslims from various parts of the Muslim world uh, make their way uh, to Saudi Arabia. Some are having very smooth, effortless journeys. Others are facing very tremendous difficulties. Tonight, we've got very uh, uh, two stories, uh, one from Cambodia, another from India, about a group of Muslims who faced uh, very significant difficulties, and we're going to uh, take a closer look at this. Also, we're going to look at uh, a, one of the business aspects of Hajj. Particularly, we're going to look at some of the uh, benefits that women, particularly in the hotel or hospitality industry, uh, they're doing very well with uh, rel relative to Hajj. We're going to look at this, and also in India, uh, a smartphone app for Hodge has been launched, uh, and we're going to look at this as well. This is a summary of some of the news items for tonight. Following the news for our social segment tonight, we're going to be talking tonight about the cross-cultural aspect of Hodge. We're bringing together people from various nationalities and cultural backgrounds, uh, all uh, united around one Islamic faith. So what are some of the uh, cross-cultural benefits, how, how does uh, the role, what role does Hajj play in terms of promoting Muslim solidarity? This is the focus of our topic for our social segment tonight following the news. We hope you benefit from this discussion. We'll take a short break right now and come back with the news. Salaam Alaikum. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hajj Day Today. Uh, we will start this evening's news segment tonight uh, with uh, Saudi Arabia. We're going to go to look at the movement of Hajj, Hajjahs from Medina to Mecca. Uh, there are more than 700,000 pilgrims who are traveling from Medina to uh, start making their way in convoys to Mecca following they started on a Friday following the Goma prayer. Uh, the number of pilgrims arriving, meanwhile, from European countries have declined uh, because of uh, previously they made connections into uh, cities and, and countries like uh, Syria and Iraq where they normally, again, connected their flights into Saudi Arabia because of the ongoing conflict, civil war, crises. Uh, the numbers of uh, pilgrims from these Eastern European countries has gone down. The authorities in Saudi Arabia, they have said uh, that they have stepped up efforts uh, at this point uh, to uh, make sure that they are very uh, professional and efficient in carrying out their duties in terms of the arrival and departures of Hajjahs who are still making their way in into the kingdom. We'll stay with Saudi Arabia for our next story and go to Mecca. Uh, the emir there, Prince Ma Mashal uh, bin Abdullah, he said that all of Saudi uh, Arabian's uh, government agencies are fully prepared to welcome and serve the Hajjahs of 2014. Uh, Prince Mashal, he said, quote, we are fully geared up to offer every service needed uh, by the guests of Allah to, so that they may perform the Hajj rites and complete uh, ease and safety, end quote. Uh, the presidency also of the two holy mosques has recruited 15,000 workers, including women, to help the pilgrims to ensure the smooth pilgrimage at all of its phases. Uh, also, uh, the Prince Mashal, he met with various ministers to discuss such issues as food provisions for the pilgrims, uh, price regulations, uh, the status of the telecommunication services, uh, security, as well as transport. As for the security briefing, uh, the commander of the Hajj Security Forces uh, said that uh, they will protect the spiritual sanctity of the pilgrimage. And he said, quote, this is the commander of the security. Uh, we will never allow any change in the objectives of the Hajj, promising to prevent corruption, 
uh, bad mouthing and heated arguments. Uh, the commander also said anyone who endeavors to propagate his political views during the Hajj will be severely punished. Uh, the Hajj uh, pilgrims, they will start making their way to this uh, tent city of Minna uh, on Thursday, which is the first leg of this five-day uh, pilgrimage. We'll go to West Africa for our next story to take a look at the thousands of Muslims who are leaving the state of Ghana. Uh, about 5,000 Muslims from the West African nation of Ghana, they have flown to Saudi Arabia for this annual pilgrimage of the Muslim faithful. Uh, Malam Ibrahim Touré, he's the imam of a mosque in Ghana's capital city, Accra, on Friday for the khutbah, his sermon uh, for the Goma prayer. He said that performing the Hajj is a realization of one of the main pillars of Islam. Addressing his audience at the mosque in Accra, he said, quote, we should make sure that the Muslims who go to Mecca are going for the love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also said that they should uh, demonstrate love, respect, adoration, worship, loyalty, obedience, and allegiance to Allah. Uh, no Muslim, he said, is expected to go there for the sake of political demonstration. No one, uh, he said, must go there to politicize his po or his political leaders. No one is supposed to, uh, uh, they're supposed to be there to worship Allah, he said. The motto for Muslims who are making the pilgrimage should only be La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Uh, this is a very strong message to remind the, the Muslims in Ghana of the purpose, encourage them to save the money to make this once in a lifetime journey, uh, inshallah. So we're very glad to see the brother there give him this message. For our next story, we go to Malaysia. Uh, the Malaysia's deputy head of the Hajj ministry. Uh, uh, he has reported that all the Malaysian Hajj pilgrims have undergone a health screening before leaving their home country for Saudi Arabia. Uh, Dr. S uh, Saiful Azan Sharif, he said that the measure is intended to ensure that the pilgrims uh, are able to perform the Hajj rituals and other obligatory uh, rich rites during the Hajj uh, without any problems. He said, quote, uh, the pilgrims who require special medical uh, treatment, such as patients who undergo dialysis treatment or stage four cancer patients will not be allowed to travel. Uh, Seifel, Dr. Seifel, he also said that the screening would prevent complications while performing the Hajj. Uh, each pilgrim received a color-coded medical book uh, to make it easier to monitor the health status of each pilgrim. The green colored medical books indicated a pilgrim who was entirely fit to perform the Hajj without any complications. The yellow medical books that were given to the pilgrims from Malaysia uh, represented those who had heart conditions or diabetes or hypertension, but were strong enough to complete the Hajj without any problems. The red color uh, medical books indicated pilgrims who had high risk illnesses, but who could still make the Hajj. Meanwhile, those who had black medical books failed the medical examinations and were prevented from performing the Hajj. Uh, undoubtedly, the Malaysian authorities here, the health ministry, they're looking to save people's lives. Not everyone who attends the Hajj comes back alive. And so they're looking to try and raise people's awareness and give them guidance to make smart decisions about their lives. Uh, we'll stay uh, with Malaysia relative to a group of Hajjahs from Cambodia. They got stuck in Malaysia on their way to Saudi Arabia. This is a group of about 100 Cambodian Muslims. Uh, they're making their uh, pilgrimage. They got stranded in Malaysia's uh, international air airport in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, they were on again on their way to Saudi Arabia. Uh, the reason they got stuck was because of a booking error that was made while their uh, passengers were being ticketed. Uh, Afrin Islam Ismail, he's a spokesman for the group. He said, quote, that the pilgrims could not travel because they were mistakenly booked for a normal flight and not a Hajj flight. Uh, Mr. Afrin, he said that the ticketing agent in uh, Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh uh, are working with Malaysian Airlines. This is a carrier that they were traveling with to solve the problem. He also said that he hopes that they can find a resolution to the problem, switching the status of their flight to a Hajj status so that they can at least make it to Saudi Arabia before 
uh, the day of Arafat that starts on October the 3rd. Uh, the pilgrims were originally scheduled uh, to reach Jeddah on Friday, September 26. Uh, so this is one of the examples of Hajj's. This is a hundred uh, Muslims leaving Cambodia from the Indo, uh, Indo uh, uh, this part of Asia. Uh, and it's a good example of how we should always remember and thank Allah for smooth travel. Uh, and we do hope that they can reach before the day of Arafat. Uh, for our next story, we go to India, the uh, high court in Bombay, uh, the, uh, on Friday, it issued a notice to the civil aviation ministry as well as the local government uh, asking for a reply within three weeks after learning about the suffering of Hajj pilgrims who were flying on Air India. Uh, the evidence uh, was submitted to the court indicating that the Muslim pilgrims uh, making their way to Saudi Arabia were delayed for over 16 hours. Uh, during this period, the pilgrims were not offered arrangements or accommodations at a hotel. Uh, some of them were more, uh, the more vulnerable passengers like the elderly uh, reportedly fainted uh, due to extreme heat and humidity while they were made to wait in the open air. Uh, the Hajj pilgrims also reported that the airline, which is uh, India's national airline, Air India, did not arrange an alternate flight. Uh, the delay was reportedly due to a technical problem, a, me a mechanical failure in the plane. Now, the, the, as unfortunate as this is, uh, all the suffering that these uh, pilgrims had to suffer over 16 hours, you know, uh, on a plane or uh, they actually deboarded the plane and had to wait, uh, is that the, for the fortunate thing is that no one died. Uh, there were reports here that some of the elderly people fainted in the heat, uh, and this is, this is trouble enough. Uh, we do hope, again, this is another example of some of the complications we can encounter on our way. We hope that they can continue uh, and uh, perform their hajj, and may Allah accept their efforts. Uh, for our next story, we will go, uh, we will stay in India. Uh, we will talk about uh, the uh, uh, airport's authority in India, the AAI. Uh, they set aside space for a group of Muslims uh, that's dedicated to performing the uh, prayers while they were waiting in areas at the airport. Uh, the move provided more comfort for the pilgrims who previously had difficulty finding suitable space to perform the prayers, especially large groups of pilgrims who are traveling together. The AAI, the Airports Authority of India, uh, converted an old international terminal into prayer halls and waiting areas for the Indian Muslims. The, uh, an official of the AAI, AAI said that uh, uh, a separate elevator, uh, an entry gate, as well as immigration counters had been set aside just for the pilgrims. Uh, uh, officials said that the Indian Hajjas were very grateful for all of what they said were attention to all the details to give them uh, this treatment. Now, this is a very opposite to the previous story we had, which was also in India. So we have two uh, different sets of experiences coming out of India. Uh, uh, and again, just pointing to the fact that it can always, uh, uh, is not all, we should always be grateful for if we have a smooth journey. We'll go back to Saudi Arabia for our next story. Uh, the Hajj minister, Bandar al-Hajjar, he has announced uh, that the theme of this year's Hajj symposium will be honoring of the Hajj rites. Uh, this year marks the 39th annual Hajj symposium, uh, which will attract prominent Islamic scholars, uh, uh, fiqh or jurisprudence experts, researchers, academics from across the Muslim world. Al-Hajjar, he said that the theme of honoring the Hajj rites is a manifestation of the strong belief in God, and the discussions during the symposium will focus on how the kingdom provides for the needs of the pilgrims. The ongoing reconstruction projects, projects uh, will also be a subject of the discussions. The symposium, he said, will consolidate uh, the principle of the rational dialogue between scholars uh, on the issues of facing the ummah. We'll look at the uh, hospitality industry and how it is helping to promote the image of women uh, in Saudi Arabia. There's a recent report that was done 
in Saudi Arabia by Mecca Daily, this newspaper. Uh, it shows that many young Saudi women uh, are working in the hospitality sector in the city of Mecca, particularly, who hold very key positions in five-star hotels, and they are successfully managing uh, major responsibilities of these hotels. Uh, their outstanding performance has served as a strong force uh, to remove the negative stereotypes uh, and the uncertainty about the success of women in the hospitality industry. Uh, one of the uh, women who participated in this recent study, Nihad Yamani, she's a supervisor at the Mecca Hilton. Uh, she uh, said that uh, she started her career as in customer service and now she is a HR specialist. Uh, describing her attention to detail, uh, she said that this is a part of the nature of a woman, uh, being uh, playing close attention to detail, she said. Uh, they have the potential, referring to women, uh, and the intrinsic qualities to outshine men in the hospitality sector. She also added that the society should have a positive outlook on women. Uh, as for the major challenges facing men, women uh, in the hospitality sector, uh, the head of the HR at Fairmont uh, Mecca Hotel, she said that uh, very uh, difficult it is for some young, particularly Muslim, or not Muslim, but young Saudi men to obey uh, women who are in supervisory or managerial positions. Uh, some of the participants said that they lack, the ch another challenge that they face is lacking proficiency in the English language, which is disproportionately high among women. So in response, some of the hotels are offering English language proficiency courses. Our last item this evening for the news segment is from the world of technology. Uh, in one of the states of India, uh, the pilgrims traveling from uh, India's state of Chhattisgarh, they have uh, an option of downloading a Hajj smartphone application to help them stay in touch with fellow Hajjis and to use other features that are designed to help them save money during their pilgrimage. The Hajj app was designed and launched right within the Chhattisgarh state and the customer response has been very favorable. The CEO of the state uh, Hajj committee uh, Saeed Meman, he said that there are several apps available uh, from various smartphone e-markets. However, he said that our application uh, is, uh, it combines a location service, a navigation service, as well as a messenger service. Uh, it features uh, security and safety uh, options so that travelers can stay connected with their group members and locate their positions at any time. They can also communicate with an integrated WhatsApp application to send messages and communicate free of charge. The state government was so impressed with the app that they bought 300 of these smartphones, installed this application on it, and delivered them or handed them out to some of the Hodges uh, free of charge. Uh, the, once the Hodges return from uh, Mecca from their pilgrimage, they'll return these 300 smartphones with the applications and the state will keep them and use them for the next round of uh, pilgrims next year. Uh, so this is a very, very innovative uh, uh, device. They're, they're saying that it's a lot better than some of the other Hodge applications that, that are out there in the e-markets. Uh, the the uh, official here also said that uh, they could save, each one can save as much as uh, $2,000 in communications uh, by using these smartphone applications. So uh, very good indeed. Uh, they can use these, for, again, to navigate in case they get lost. Lots of good features there uh, for this Hodge app. We hope you enjoyed some of the news items. This will conclude the news segment of the program. We'll continue uh, the program Hodge Day today with our social topic tonight. This is about the cross-cultural, uh, international aspect of Hajj, people coming together, uh, united by one Islamic faith uh, from different cultural uh, and national uh, backgrounds, uh, and how we can use this to promote Muslim solidarity. We hope you enjoy the discussion. Inshallah, we'll be back tomorrow with more news and information. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and my dear brothers and sisters in Islam welcome back to our program as we continue our live Hajj coverage this year the year 1435 after the Hijrah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my dear brothers and sisters it's a great honor and a great pleasure to be with you here tonight as we continue talking about some of the issues that are leading us to the Hajj season specifically some of the lessons that we can learn from Hajj and I don't think, my dear brothers and sisters, that there is any message so there in your face as the message that we're going to be talking about today. As you watch our hujaj this year all dressed in the same clothes, and at the same time, my dear brothers and sisters, people coming from different races and nationalities from all around the world, and they're united on La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah saying Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik from every corner of the globe, you wonder why we as Muslims around the world are so disunited. We're talking tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, about unity and its importance for the Muslim Ummah and the reasons that we are so disunited as an Ummah today, even though we have this yearly global conference, as some people may call it, called Hajj, that brings about so vividly the idea of unity. We get to see it every single day during Hajj, people coming from different parts of the globe, no matter if they're rich or poor, no matter if they are white or black, if their eyes are green or if they are brown or whatever, they are or what their names are, they are united. And they're there for the same purpose and all of them are doing the exact same thing. If only, if only we can take that small example that happens in Hajj and we, I say small because at max there are maybe 3 million Muslims out of 1.5 billion Muslims from around the world are at Hajj. If only we can take that small example and implement it in our lives as a Muslim Ummah, we would be in a different place amongst the nations that are around us than where we are today. If you look, my dear brothers and sisters, you would see that the United States of America is probably on top of the world right now. The European Union is also getting there. The word union or the word united resonates in your mind as you hear that because you think to yourself, subhanAllah, these people, they may come from different parts. They may all have different states or different languages as is the case in Europe but they decided to unite on a common goal. And we as Muslims, whether we are Arab or we're from the subcontinent or we're from Africa or wherever we are from around the world, we are so disunited. And as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says in the hadith, there would come a time where we are so numerous in number, yet we are so weak. We're like the foam on top of the ocean. And the reason uh, behind that is because we are so disunited and at the same time uh, we know we love the dunya so much and we hate death. My dear brothers and sisters we're going to go ahead and take a look at this short report inshallah talking about the importance of unity in Islam. When we come back we'll be joined by two amazing brothers inshallah who will be talking to us more about the subject and we're going to open up our lines in this specially hot topic here tonight where I want brothers and sisters to call from every corner of the globe so that we can all talk about how we can unite our Muslim Ummah. Please stay tuned. Allah Azza wa Jal wants the Muslim Ummah and the Muslims to be united, never ever to be divided. As our strength is with unity and our weakness is with division, our honor and respect is with unity and our humiliation is with division. And that's what Allah commands. Allah Azza wa Jal does not just recommend but He commands. وَعْتَصِمُوا Break time unto the rope of Allah together. Not as individuals but as one ummah because this ummah is one. This ummah is one regardless of the individuals. And the members of this ummah at the end of the day we are one ummah that worships one Lord and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no reason for us to be divided. There is no reason for us to be disunited. There is no reason for us to each one of us goes on their own way. We all need to be together, grabbing onto one rope. What rope is it? It is 
This 
ummah is one figure. If one limb or organ is in pain, the rest of the body is in pain. If your finger is in pain, you find that the rest of the body is in pain and agony. If your toe or your hand or your eye or your nose is in pain, the rest of the body is in agony. And this ummah is one ummah. We are united as one, regardless where we come from, regardless which nationalities we come from. All this at the end of the day, Islam overrides everything. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back my dear brothers and sisters to Hajj Day Today. Thank you so much for continuing to be with us here tonight on our special live coverage in this year's Hajj, the year 1435 after the Hijrah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, the topic that we're talking about here tonight really should you know, send chills in everybody's body because it's so important, especially in the time that we live in today where Muslims are so disunited into different countries, different nations. Everyone is looking out for his or her own interest, uh, whether it's on the individual level or on the Ummah level. Unfortunately, that is the situation that we're in and we have to understand the problem in order to be able to solve it. Um, so my dear brothers and sisters, we want to discuss a little bit what are some of the reasons behind that and maybe dive into some of the root causes, uh, you know, not just looking at the surface, but looking at some of the root causes of uh, this problem and how it came about and also try to, you know, suggest some possible solutions. So we love your contribution with us here in this special episode tonight. Whether you, my dear brothers and sisters, are watching us right now live from Mecca or from Medina, if you are at Hajj yourself this year, inshallah, and waiting for Hajj uh, to begin. Or if you uh, are like us and you are not at Hajj this year, also feel free to give us a call and share your thoughts uh, with us, inshallah. Um, let me begin by introducing my two amazing guests here tonight, Brother Muhammad Sharaf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi Welcome back to the program and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Uh, Brother Muhammad Sharaf is a family coach and a family counselor uh, at the same time. Zakallah khayy. And my second guest is the brother with the big smile. Mashallah, Brother Abdul Salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you so much for being with us here. Alhamdulillah, it's an honor to be here. Zakallah khayy. Um, Brother Muhammad, let me begin uh, by asking you uh, about some of the root causes behind the problem that we are facing here uh, as a Muslim Ummah. You know, some people kind of look at the crust, you know, they say, okay, we're disunited because this or that, but really there has to be some root causes to what we're facing here today. And it must be something that did not just happen overnight, you know. Some people say, okay, you know, the Khilafah ended in the year 1923 or the year 1924, and that was it. You know, they make it sound like everything was so perfect mm -hmm. until that specific date, and then it just all went down the drain. Which may not, I, I mean, I, I don't believe that to be the case, because, you know, change, whether it's positive or negative, is kind of incremental. You know, it, it happens like, it, it's not just so steep. Um, so, really, what are some of the main causes behind the disunity that we're seeing amongst Muslims today? Well, actually, um, let's look at the nucleus of the, the Muslims, uh, of the Muslim nation itself, mm. and let's see all the diseases that are happening in our society, uh, the Muslim uh, Ummah and the societies, uh, the Muslim societies, and even the, uh, in, in the foreign countries, you know, we can see the same illness everywhere, you know. The same illness, w which is really the, the the art of you know how to, how you make enemies between uh, between each other, you know how you contradict, uh, you, you you create conflicts of interest, how you create uh, disputes, how you you really uh, um, I totally totally disregard the 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 original me message that we are all created for, you know. Mm. We all have one one qibla, and this this at uh, this at uh, these days. The days of Hajj, uh, we all unite towards looking at at Al Kaaba and looking at the pilgrims who are uh, doing the rituals around Al Kaaba, you mm -hmm. know, and actually underst and really understand the true nature of what we are. We are humans, and we have the greatest religion that united humans from all around the the, the, the world 
from east to west, from uh, north to, to, to south, you know, from all the colors, you know, from Africa, Asia, Europe, uh, states, um, and uh, uh, America's uh, s south and north, mm -hmm. you know, and north and south and, and, and Australia, all are gathered with different tongues, with different colors, with different languages, different cultures, and they, they are practicing the same rituals that united all these humans all around the world. And we have the only creed that can really do this and we are disregarding this in our daily life. Mm -hmm. We are disregarding this in our so society. We are disregarding this in our uh, working practices. We are, uh, we are disregarding this in our nuclear, nuclear cell, which is the family. Mm -hmm. Within the, the same family, and, and the first ritual the, the husband and wife has to do after the, the, the contract signing of the marriage and, you know, and, the, and the, the wedding ceremony, is that they have to direct themselves to the Qibla and remember that this is where we have to focus our mission on. We are the slaves of Allah. We are doing our, our role in, in Khilafah here on, on, on earth and of succession of, uh, of, of Allah he, here on earth. And we have to build this nucleus to build more and to, to, to bring up more Muslims and more sub submitters and more uh, people who are really uh, um, uh, the and you know, uh, males and females who, who will uh, worship Allah Azza wa here on earth and who will create and, 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 and unite the, the human community all around the world, you know, mm. uh, under the same, under one message, which is La ilaha illallah. Um, it's amazing that you brought it down to that simple level, you know, of, of uh, the nucleus, because really that's, that's where it, what it is. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, subhanAllah, you think to yourself, if the family was in good shape, then the entire ummah would be in good shape. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Right. 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 Um, let's focus a little bit on family, as, mm -hmm. as, as Brother Muhammad was saying. Uh, you know, um, sometimes Muslims who even live like in the United States, for example, uh, and, and they technically come from two different backgrounds, they have a hard time to even get married in the first place, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. how can we talk about unity if, uh, if we can't even get a brother or sister <laughs> married just because, you know, they're from different countries or they have yeah. different skin colors, even though they're both Muslims? Yeah, it's culture, right? Um, cultural background is really strong. Um, and... Uh, we have to, inshallah, realize, we don't have to, but it would behoove us <laughs> to realize that, you know, Allahu Akbar. What does this mean? Mm. This means that if we are Muslim, then our Islam is over everything else. I mean, we can, we, you know, we all have our cultural habits, our foods, our dress, our ways, you know. But when it comes down to even the, like, marriage, um, we should look at Islamic values uh, in marriage rather than the cultural values. That should be secondary. The culture should be secondary to the Islamic values and uh, righteousness and uh, piety and these, these sort of things. So, um, like the brother was saying, you know, we have a great religion. We have the best religion, mashallah, mm -hmm. a complete religion that we have in Islam. But, you know, practicing it, truly practicing it, is you know this is the challenge that we face our religion is perfect our book is perfect but, but we're not <laughs> is that we're not we're not perfect so we need to you know get closer to allah uh by um reading his book learning our religion and you know looking at our history um really and even in the west you know it's kind of like a vacuum of knowledge in some places mm -hmm. um you know until i've uh I didn't really know our history uh, as far as Muslims are concerned until I traveled really here to Egypt. Yes. And I began to really crack open some books and some, well, PDFs nowadays, right? How many brothers and sisters just begin taking uh, some phone calls? Our first call of the night is from Sister Um Jenna from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead, sister. Yes, I would like to make a comment. Uh, I agree. It is so very, very sad that our Ummah is not united, mm -hmm. uh, especially during these times uh, when we need to be united more and more uh, between uh, Sunni, the Sunni, the Sunni, the Shia, whatever. Uh, 
uh, but I truly believe the lack of unity is really from the lack of Akiba. I really, really believe that uh, this, we are here to worship Allah. Then we are then to follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi I believe even long, long ago when Prophet Muhammad died, that the people then followed Mahats. And today, still, same, same problem. People still follow Mahats or they follow uh, this sheikh or that sheikh, or they mm -hmm. follow this family, uh, the, this family person, or this friend, or that friend, uh, without uh, true knowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. They do not follow the Quran and the Sunnah. You know, what the Sunnah, meaning what uh, Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. did, then about that hadith, what he said. Uh, I believe uh, instead of people so very proud, very proudly saying, I follow Maliki, or I follow Shafi, or I follow Hanafi. I think they should really have taqwa of Allah and stop saying this. And to say more, I follow Sunnah and Hadith, Quran, you know, and follow your uh, follow doing your abada according to that, and till the outward becomes inward in your practice that you it reaches your heart. And I believe this to be the problem. Thank you so much, Sister Omujana, for your thoughts and your comments. And brothers and sisters, our phone lines are open for you right now. Inshallah. So feel free to give us a call and uh, share your thoughts with us. Tell us what's uh, on your mind. Uh, I do disagree a little bit with the whole uh, Sunni Shia issue when you just said that in the beginning, uh, simply because it's not as easy as it sounds. But uh, uh, most of the things that you said, I think most of us or all of us would uh, would agree on, inshallah. My dear brothers and sisters, our phone lines are open, so feel free to give us a call and share your thoughts uh, with us, inshallah. Uh, Brother Muhammad, I want to ask you uh, kind of a hypothetical question. I don't really like to to do that most of the time, but I mm. think uh, I think it would it would make an impact in the situation that we're in. I want you to imagine with me uh, that the Muslim Ummah is united. Uh, you know, what would be some of the signs of that, and and why would that be uh, significant? Well, uh, let's talk about. Um these days in, in Hajj, and, and we have three million Muslims, um, three million human beings actually, and I, I like to, to say this, and they are three million hum human beings who are having the same creed of, you know, of, of uh, Islam, and they are mm -hmm. all sub submitters, to, uh, submitters to Allah, and, and we, we call them Muslims. Th yani that, that's how uh, God, uh, God uh, ca called them, and Allah Azza Jal called them, and how uh, Ibrahim uh, alayhi salam called them, and this is what we are called in the end, that we are Muslims, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Uh, they, are, they are assembled in the same place, which is, you know, uh, you're talking about something like um, f five kilometers square or something, you know, around the Kaaba, and they're moving from one place to another, mm -hmm. and through for, for something like four to five days, uh, you know, of rituals, group rituals. They are actually during these these days, you are seeing everybody is eating, everybody is drinking, everybody is sleeping, everybody is 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 actually wearing like each other, uh, each each everybody else, you know, they're they're on the same, you know simple that the simplest uniform that anyone can can really put on on himself which is a simple cloth you know mm -hmm. and they are mostly not arguing they are mostly not doing bad deeds not looting not doing anything that is really against the 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 the, um, the, the um, you know uh, harm to 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 the human being sounds more like a utopian society <laughs> that's 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 it yeah and that's that's what what we need in the world, you know. That's that's what that's the call of humanity, mm. simplicity, you know, peace. Mm. That is the call of you know, really. That's that's what what we we are created for. We're created for this. Yeah. We are created. That's that's our material. That's the the true material that Allah Azza created us with. That is the fitra, you know. That we we don't carry harm to anyone, you know, and and human beings should be 
solidifying along the even when you see it, when they're uh, going through you know the the, the circles around Kaaba and mm -hmm. when it's the call for prayer you know it just happens like this in few seconds they're aligned they're it's so organic you know so so yeah. you, you so so um, organized it can't happen in any place you know when, whenever you're you're doing this uh, in, in maybe something like a uh, you're maestroing uh, something like a, 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 a group dance or something like this you can't do it that perfect you know and if, if there is a show or something in a mm -hmm. stadium or something like this you can group something like 100,000 audience you know and get some dancers or whatever sh so he, those who will come and you have to train them for days and days nights and nights you know and it, the, you will have glitches you know they will not be that you know organized with, within this you know um, small spaces mm -hmm. you know and 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 the crowdness and everything and there will be some injuries because of you know this is drunk you know this is you know uh, is uh, and there will be some sexual harassment you know some things uh, things like that which which never happens in, in mm -hmm. Hajj alhamdulillah mm -hmm. and maybe if it happens it's so minor you know yeah. when, uh, when somebody is get hit you know with, with a stone or something like this you know we, we hear something like this or gets a sunstroke you know <laughs> these are the two things that may happen to to pilgrims uh, who, who may uh, get, get shahada but nobody steps over somebody you know and gets mm -hmm. uh, or i mean we used to have those problems in the past but alhamdulillah i think alhamdulillah. Uh, it's been fixed you know with the recent renovations alhamdulillah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring everyone back uh, safely and mm -hmm. um, Subhanallah, uh, as, as you say that, uh, maybe I need to rephrase my question. Maybe we don't need to imagine. We just yeah. need to look, yeah. you know, at, <laughs> and at Hajj and, and, and basically see that as the sample, really. And, and we, if we can just make it a little bit larger, mm. instead of maybe, you know, between 3 million people, if we can make it between 1.5 uh, you know, billion people, then uh, we no, wouldn't need to imagine that. 7 much. billion people, you know. Mm. This is a message for humanity, not only Muslims. This message is not only for the one billion, one and a half billion Muslims. It's, yes. it's for the humanity, for the seven billion who have to, to watch and know that this is, there is no God but Allah. This is, this is a message to all humans. Everyone who witnessed this, this, is, uh, this will witness on him on, on the day of judgment, you know. Brother Abdul Salam, how can we take advantage of uh, Hajj, uh, you know, to achieve the unity of them? How can we think uh, you know, and watch the hujjaj, even if we're not there, and come up with lessons, um, you know, that we can implement in our lives in order to achieve unity. Uh, let me delay that question for just a moment as we take this call, and then uh, we'll come back to it. Uh, Brother Muhammad from Egypt, Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Brother Osama? Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ameen. Brother Muhammad, thank you so much for calling us here tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Osama. I'm going to talk to Brother Muhammad Sharaf. Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My call awesome. is for regards to um, in concern of the sister that she called about five minutes ago. I want to tell you something, all the viewers, that uh, those are Shafi'i and Malik, all these call, big scholars. They came here uh, to this world to guide us, to yes. show us the right way. And one of them, uh, uh, Abu Hanifa, said, "If you find my words, it's not uh, exactly the same as like what the Prophet said." That threw away and uh, don't care about it. So yes. nobody is proud to be Shafi'i, nobody is proud to be Maliki. All of them, they say that we, uh, they show us the way to the Prophet, mm -hmm. the way to, uh, um, that they, 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 they could uh, understand the, the proper understanding of, of the Sunnah. And then they show, uh, showed us and uh, tried to ease it for us because we are not. Uh, uh, the era of the Prophet I mean, that's, that's so what I want to say for tonight. Thank you very much for that, Sayyidina. Barakallahu feek, Brother Muhammad. Zakallahu khairan for your comments. Uh, I want to respond to that though by saying that uh, maybe Sister Umu Jannah who called us a little bit earlier, what she meant really was, uh, she was she did not mean of course the four great Imams. She was talking about the followers, you know, who may be going a little bit extreme. Okay, yeah. well, okay, you know, I'll only talk to you if you're Hanafi. I'll only pray behind you if you're Shafi. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that's what she was uh, that she was referring to. But thank you so much, Brother Muhammad, for your thoughts and your comments. And brothers and sisters, our phone lines are open. I, I want to get a whole lot more calls. I know a lot of people are watching, especially our brothers and sisters who are in Mecca and Medina. Uh, let me tell you, if you're watching us for the very first time, this is uh, Huda TV, and this is a channel based on the Quran and the Sunnah, the pure sources of Al-Islam. 
uh, feel free to give us a call and join us and tell us about your experiences this year at Hajj, what you're feeling, what you're witnessing uh, this year. Make us all enjoy uh, your experience that you are seeing and that you are witnessing, inshallah. And remember that uh, when you're calling us, it's for free. We don't make any money off uh, the phone calls. You pay whatever you know international rate you would pay on your calling card or mobile number or whatever the case may be, inshallah. But we would love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you have any questions for us here this evening, feel free to give us a call and join us, inshallah. Uh, Brother Abdul Salam, yes. uh, back to the question I was asking you. You know, how can we take advantage of Hajj? Either those of us who are at Hajj this year or those of us who are watching from home to bring about unity in the Muslim Ummah, whether, uh, you know, in Muslim countries or in our local communities and masajid in Western countries. Uh, SubhanAllah. Actually, um, Allah, Allahu Alam, Allah knows best, okay? But I'll, I think that, um, you know, when you look at the people who are making Hajj, you look at the pilgrims, they are entrenched in the worship of Allah. And they're putting Allah first. They're spending their time, uh, their, their effort, their money. Um, many of them has, have, you know, spent probably half of a lifetime or a lifetime to get there, mm -hmm. okay, to worship Allah. They're putting Allah at the top. So um, that's something that we can learn Definitely. if we want to, uh, this, this uh, phenomenon, <laughs> you could say, of Hajj to spread, you know, and, uh, and make a positive impact. I'm sure it already is uh, making, a, and they'll go back to their communities because I've talked to people. I haven't made Hajj myself, yeah. but I've talked to people who have made Hajj and the stories that they give, mashallah, it, you know, encourages me and others. Yeah. We hope it's sustainable, though. Right? Yeah, we, we need want to sustainable yeah. impact and change. And actually, yesterday's episode, we were talking about change. We yeah. want to make a change in our life, but we hope that it's sustainable. It's not just, you know, for a couple of weeks after Hajj, yeah. that's it. We, like the sister said, uh, what was it? Um, um, Jannah. Um, Jannah, yeah. um, you know, about education, you know, about learning. Uh, you know, we have the different groups of the, the madhabs that I hear, and especially in the West, there's some like, you know, people, uh, they like, they're very strong about their madhab, but they were, if you look at the four imams, they were students and teachers of each other, mm -hmm. most of them. They, even if they had differences, and they had differences, uh, they never argued and they never did, you know, they never let it be a source of disunity yes. in the ummah. And then if we and look... And as Brother Muhammad said, you know, like uh, they w themselves would say, if you find a hadith that contradicts my opinion, then take the Yeah, this is my, this is yeah. my ma uh, madhab, exactly, right? Exactly. So this kind of thing of like when I, you know, started really studying and looking and stuff like that uh, into uh, my religion and our religion, I found that um, it is truly one religion. Mm -hmm. And it goes back uh, to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so Alaihi and the commands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if we all go back to this, I think a, a great part of uh, unity and a great way that we can achieve it is by education. Because mm -hmm. it breaks down walls, it breaks down, it breaks down barriers. If we all understand our religion, and how we are one. Even if you look at the, you look, you mentioned the Shia, if you understand the Aqidah of the Shia, you will say, okay, well this part is not Islam, and this, or this part, what they're doing is permissible, and this isn't, and then you will begin to understand, and we will begin to understand our religion. But now, I guess, you know, some of us, we just grow up in a household where we're, whatever our parents doing, we're doing, or whatever the local brothers are doing in the mosque, we do, um, and we're not getting a, a full education, and we're not being fully educated on our religion, our, the history of our religion, uh, the aqidah, our true aqidah, um, and these things. I think this, we will get all, we'll, once we all have the same Islamic education, you know, then we will understand it. I believe it was a slave girl in the time of the Prophet when so they right. asked her, who, um, where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then she had the proper aqidah, uh, the proper uh, creed, and she, she pointed up. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he's above the heavens and the earth, and she was, uh, and he said, set her free, she's a Muslim. Well, but now, nowadays, you know, if you get the average Muslim on the street, at least in America, when I was there, if they had even stopped me a few years ago, mm -hmm. and they asked me the same question as they asked a slave girl at that time, um, you, you know, I, I probably you couldn't have answered answer. you correctly mm -hmm. until I, oh, I got a, uh, you know, until you get a good source of education. Yeah. So I think through education, 
um, you know, the proper education, I think it could bring about unity, Beautiful. inshallah. Zakallah khayn, barakallah feek. My dear brothers and sisters, we want to go ahead and take a look at this report by Mufti Ismail Mink, inshallah. When we come back, we'll take some more of your phone calls and uh, we have a little surprise for you. So please do stay with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. Warns us of something that we do need a warning about today in the world. Today what happens to the Muslims? Every small thing we are divided. Small thing, we cannot work together. We are divided. If a person for example is tall, he doesn't get along with those who are short. I mean that's a bit ridiculous but it can happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really has warned us about dispute amongst you as an ummah. If you are to dispute and argue, what will happen? You lose your power and your might as an ummah. Today we have two billion Muslims on the globe. We cannot agree to swat a fly. I'm honest with you. We have two billion Muslims on the globe. We cannot agree to swat a fly. Why? Because everyone is a big sheikh on his own. And everyone wants to have a big say. And the sheikhs are fighting each other. Each one calling the other a kafir. Wallahi, it's a reality. So what is happening? Our leaders are debating and arguing and fighting and calling each other names. The public are even more confused because any message of goodness, they are kept away. Hey, don't go here. Don't go there. What is the story? What happens? Allah says, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Verse number 46 of Surah Al-Anfal. Follow Allah and follow His Rasul and do not dispute with one another because it will result in your total failure and the, and the going away or snatching away of your might as an ummah. Gone. Totally gone. Why? Because small disputes. Today, brothers and sisters don't speak to each other. What a shame. Uncles and aunts don't speak to each other. Trustees from one masjid do not get along with trustees from another masjid. Why? It's an issue of prestige. Allah, what are you talking about? We are an ummah. We share the shahada. That's enough. Put aside your differences and come together. We need the might as an ummah. We have the numbers. We have everything. But the problem is we are disputing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in another verse in the Quran. Do you know what he says? وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ The kuffar, they are supporters and protectors of one another. Come what may, they put aside their differences when it comes to sticking up for one another. This is in the Quran. We read the verse tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. This in fact is verse number 73 of the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal. Do you know what Allah says after he tells us that the kuffar stick up for one another and they protect one another? He says, if you are not going to do the same, then there will be great fitna and fasad on earth. That means if you are not going to stick up for one another and protect one another, then there will be chaos and corruption on the whole globe. Hence, we find the chaos and corruption on the globe today. It is a decree of Allah. We are totally disunited. We cannot see face to face yet. We are born through one mother and father. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah. May Allah protect us. It is worth crying for my brothers and sisters. We are calling for unity. It is not going to come without tolerating one another. We need to understand not everybody is going to think the same. Not everybody is going to have the same inclinations. But don't we share the shahada? Isn't that stronger than the bond of blood, my brothers and sisters? Gone are the days when the kuffar are excited because they can trample over us by the mere disunity that we are engaged in, my brothers and sisters. We need it. We need it desperately. Our brothers are suffering across the globe, all over. The reason is we are swearing one another. We are calling one another names. We do not want to look at one another. Whereas we all utter the shahada. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. 
My brothers and sisters, it is a passionate call. We want peace. We are searching for peace. We are the people of peace. Why then are we looked at as warmongers who are killing one another across the globe just because we have a little difference? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this ummah and may he grant us unity. May he open our doors until we meet again. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back my dear brothers and sisters to Hajj day to day and I want to tell you that we are not only with you here tonight but we are with you for the duration of this week inshallah leading up to Friday inshallah which is going to be the day of Arafah and we'll be with you for the entire day inshallah during uh, the day of Arafah not just for a couple of hours or an hour and a half like we are right now but we'll be with you maybe a little bit after Fajr until very late at night inshallah as we witness the greatest day of Hajj the day of Arafah and then we'll have some uh, amazing recorded episodes for you during the days of Eid inshallah so I hope you get to watch those as well uh, inshallah um, my dear brothers and sisters we are continuing to talk about unity we still have some time here in the program and I would love for you to give us a call and share your thoughts with us so please do and uh, tell us what you're witnessing if you are currently in Mecca or Medina or what you're witnessing as you're watching the Hajjaj come from different parts of the world and go to uh, Mecca and Medina and other parts uh, inshallah uh, I said we have a little surprise for you and uh, of course we have brother Abdul Salam with us and all of you know him uh, f you know, from being a guest on this program or being on different programs like Adam and Sally and other programs here on Huda TV, he has a beautiful voice, mashallah, and he has a special nasheed for us uh, in uh, this time uh, of the year called the House of Allah. Right, Bilal Sam? Yes, inshallah. Okay, go ahead, inshallah. Okay, bismillah. To the House of Allah, the House of Allah, from all over the world. All over the world In Ibrahim's day The Kaaba was raised To glorify Allah But when mankind lost their sight Allah sent a light Through Muhammad Mustafa <laughs> giving us rights to fulfill, to cure our ills, and purify our hearts from distant highways and specific days, all going to the house of Allah, to the house of Allah from all over the world. All over the world. Absolutely. Zakallah khair. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the opportunity to go to the house of Allah. Yes. Yes. Ta'ala soon, inshallah. Zakallah khair. Brother Muhammad, I want to go back to the idea of the family. As you said, it is the nucleus. Uh, talk to us a little bit more in detail about what we can do. Uh, you know, on the individual level, meaning like on the level of the family as a husband and wife, in order to promote the concept of unity? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we have to tolerate the, 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 the differences inter inside the family itself. We have lots of differences. First of all, that there's the male and the female, you know, mm -hmm. with the differences between them. Sometimes As they say, uh, men are from Mecca, women are from Medina. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so that that is actually something that the, the male is not like the female you yeah. know they're not the same you know and most of the issues that we, we, we are, that I see that lots of the current generations are not oriented towards gender, gender intelligence and understanding the differences between mm. the males and the females and actually lots of issues happen because of this you know we have to tolerate the differences in personality types you know mm -hmm. and how, how we are different characters we are different uh, uh, human beings, you know, who have different motivations. We have different t ways of thinking, the, the, the different ways of dealing with the outside world, different ways of learning, you mm -hmm. know. And we have to understand this and we have to tolerate this inside home and, and appreciate the differences inside the same house. We, we, we shouldn't be the same thing, you know. We shouldn't be molded in a special form. You know, each of us has a unique character and, and this has to be cherished and, and loved and accepted inside mm -hmm. the same home. So we're talking about unity through diversity. Yes, mm -hmm. through diversity, but it's 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 uniform towards Kaaba, you know, towards mm -hmm. 
the same qibla, the same direction. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Mm. This this is the first this Beautiful. is the first differences. The differences in culture also we have intercultures between Muslims. You know, they're having people who, who are talking on, on uh, uh, yani with different dialects, mm -hmm. with different languages, with different, uh, have different uh, habits, you know, and different cultural, you know, whatever. And they are tolerating each other in the same place and even eating, eating with each other, drinking with each other, uh, celebrating, you know, the rituals with each other, you know. And we have to have this, uh, you know, cultural diversity, you know, inside home. Uh, currently, I see people, you know, like you know, some 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 youth who who, who really reject, you know, either uh, the, the uh, spouses, yeah, because of the difference in in accents, you know, in accents in the same city, which is Cairo, you know, mm. you can see some people from different districts because of uh, an accent, you know, this uh, she says T, this she says whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and and because of the, the, this dialect, you know, the, she rejects the whole family or he rejects the whole family because they're not on the, from the same cultural mm -hmm. background. Hey, come on. We, we we can live together with different you know with with the difference in and the that's what Allah said that he created us into nations and tribes so that we can get to know one each other yes. one one yeah. another yeah so so that's so inside the same the nucleus hmm. we have to be diverse accepting we have to to really direct each uh, forcefully uh, to, to work together towards al qibla you know have the a family mission together and work together as, as a team diverse which 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 we really appreciate the differences between each other you mm. know appreciate our humanity and this this should come you know uh, second after la ilaha illallah rasulullah i want to also ask you about the issue of mistrust yeah. um, really it, it could bring about a lot of disunity uh, i want to hear your thoughts about that yes um, well actually um, yani actually when we're talking about mistrust yani we have we have a serious issue you know when you're yani if if you, if you are you know uh, in inside the same home and you're not trusted by your spouse or mm -hmm. not uh, trusted by y your kids or your kids or you're not trusted by your parents you know and you feel insecure inside the place that is really that should be that your, your your you know that the, the place that should cure you you know the place that you should should hug you the place that you sh should should feel safe and secure inside you will never be secure outside it you know now in in Hajj or pil pilgrimage we see everybody securing towards each each other Everybody is just, you know, wearing the 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 the, 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 the pilgrimage cloths, cloth, yeah. you know, and actually, there everybody is securing each other. Nobody will 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 do any harassment to to anyone. Nobody is going to to do anything that 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 will harm anyone. You know, everybody is going there not to harm anyone. Mm -hmm. And actually, if there is mistrust, everybody will will actually feel insecure and nobody will go to a pilgrimage you know yes so so if there is mistrust inside inside our homes we don't trust uh, our spouses we don't trust our our parents we don't trust our kids to do what they wha what they should do uh, should be doing you know in the time that they they should be doing it then we will not feel secure inside our communities because nobody will yani is feeling safe already for 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 himself is not sat yani satisfying from uh, satisfied himself or herself from being uh, secured uh, uh, in internally and externally so no security will be in any community that mm -hmm. that uh, there is mistrust inside homes itself so you, yeah. you emphasized uh, and you talked about and you stressed two very important points uh, the first is uh, for us as Muslims to accept each other's uh, differences, you know, and, and to use these as long as we're going through the to towards the same goal, which is the qibla, uh, to use that as a source of unity. And then you also talked about the very important issue of trust and yeah. uh, the reason that we need that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Muhammad. Uh, uh, now, Brother uh, Abdul Salam, I want to ask you one final question about the term divide and conquer. Do you think this uh, applies uh, to the enemies of Islam using the strategy to disunite Muslims? For centuries, for centuries. Um, just, uh, you know, we look at, you know, uh, our history mm -hmm. and it's been happening. We have uh, adamant enemies uh, of Islam um, that try to disunite us in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we can't blame our disunity on them. <laughs> because Allah has given us the cure, you mm -hmm. know. And but if we look, you know, it's a reality. I mean, even if you look at uh, the, you could say subtle forms, but it's really of media, you know, and the programming that's being done in the culture of the world right now. I mean, not only just with Muslims, but with any kind of religious people. It's like the the youth is they are being sucked into this culture of. Um, 
a, a destructive culture of immorality, mm -hmm. of a carelessness, um, and it's being promoted. Um, but, you know, I think the way to combat that is, you know, with our, with our Islam. I think there is strategies, you know, uh, people out here trying to uh, undermine Islam on, you know, many different levels, from the media mm -hmm. to politics to uh, social, you know, discourse. But alhamdulillah, what the brother is saying, a way to cure this, inshallah, is for, like first you said, the man and woman relationship and to have that trust, you know, and build a good relationship that transmits to the children in the home and have an Islamic home and then the Islamic family, yeah. and then families, they get together and make Islamic neighborhoods and, you know, this way we could start in our home and let it spread out to the world in this way, with ourselves, with our loved ones, our spouses, and then to our neighbors and other families and friends and create beautiful communities this way. And this love and this practice of Islam this is more powerful than any kind of undermining efforts that could e ever be uh, concocted. And Alhamdulillah, Allah, He said He put love in our hearts. You yeah. know, the Muslims, He put, a, He and gave. Allah us Allah uh, tells the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if He would have spent, you know, everything in this life, all money and everything, you'd have never united between their hearts. And it was only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that united between yeah. their hearts. Allah is Al Wadud. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Yeah, he's Al Jamil. Yeah, I want to thank both of you for your time. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, and I really, really enjoyed talking with both of you. And inshallah, hope we get to meet again soon. Inshallah. Yeah. Brother Muhammad Sharaf and Brother Abd Salim. Barakallahu feek. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for having been with us here tonight on Hajj Day Today. We'll be back again tomorrow night, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us life. Until then, make dua for yourselves, for all of us, and for the entire Muslim ummah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.